Hi, teachers. Today, we're going to take a look at the California Inspire Science online platform. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the activities that you can choose to uh, support your students asynchronously and synchronously. And we're going to take a look at how to assign asynchronous activities to students. We'll take a look at how to check student progress and provide feedback. And then we'll look at how to add the scores to student work. So we're going to start today with fourth grade. I'm going to show you the different levels of the Inspire Science program, including the module level and the lesson level. We'll talk about some of the activities that you'll choose to do out of these and how you can decide which ones will best suit your students' needs in the format that you need them to see it in. So we'll start here. This is the dashboard. Um, every grade level has a dashboard. The things that you'll always see on the dashboard include these additional resources over on the side and the model, the browse your course. That's where we're going to go to select what we are going to share with the students. So we'll start here with browse your course. There's a program overview section and a program resources section where you can look through materials. And then you have these uh, blades. Each blade is going to represent a module level. What you'll want to do is you'll want to look first at this parenthesis. In the parentheses, it'll show you what unit they're working on. So for example, module energy and motion is in unit one. It is the only module in unit one for fourth grade. So we'll go ahead and click on the down arrow that's next to the module blade. And you'll see that this module has the module front matter, which is all of the module activities Below the module level, you have each of the lessons that are included in that module. So this module, particularly for fourth grade, the suggested time for this whole module is 24 and a half days. So this module will essentially take you through your first month of teaching. But remember, this is the only module in this unit. So this is a one fourth of your year as far as science goes. So when you see lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, these are not lessons to be accomplished in a day. As a matter of fact, each of these lessons takes about seven days to complete fully. Of course, we're not going to have that full 45 minute lesson every single day that um, we might have in the classroom. So we're going to talk about what we can pick and choose in order to help keep students moving and engaged in science while we're doing remote learning. So let's take a look at that module level. When we open up the module level, you'll see that the color is in the orange family. If you're in a section with orange, that means you are at the module level. There's only going to be a few resources in here and they are just the getting the students started on that overarching phenomenon. And then at the end, summarizing that phenomenon and explaining how it works with regard to the learning that the students have done throughout the lessons. So in this case, for module one, we have our module opener. We have a STEM module project that the students will be previewing. Then you'll see it jumps right down to module wrap up because this is the bookends of your module. It's not the entire module. So we have our module assessment, the module library with some extra resources, and then the Spanish module resources. Now, these are just the resources that support those bookends of the unit. So we'll go into our module opener. This is where you'll find Encounter the Phenomenon video. So this is the first video that you would show students to pique their interest in the phenomenon that we'll be studying over the course of the module. It looks like a good assignment that I want my students to do. I want them to notice and wonder about it. So let's go ahead and assign this module opener. I'm going to click on Assign. You'll notice it automatically pops in the title here. When am I going to start this? I probably start it, um, it's a short assignment, so I will probably start it and finish it within a day. I wanna make sure that the students have done this before we meet again. So I'm going to say, please complete this assignment before our next Zoom meeting. 
And then that way the students have some direction on that. I can decide which students see the assignment. Here it says all students, it defaults to all students. But if I don't want it to go to all students, I can always click here and select the groups. I can either assign it to one of the small groups I've created, or I can assign it to individual students as needed. So for now, I'm going to leave it to default to all students. I'm going to give it a point value of 10 points. Um, I won't change this assignment category because we are we have not been using the gradebook on Inspire Science. If you are coring or working with another teacher where you teach science for both your class and another class, you have this option to copy to classes. So if you have two classes that are the same grade level, but different sets of kids, you can actually copy the same assignment to both groups by using this button here. But it only ungrades if you have uh, two classes at the same grade level. Otherwise, it's not going to be available for you. So I'm going to go ahead and click Assign, and that assignment will now be assigned to the students. So if I want that to go to my Google Classroom, what I want to do is I want to view results. Here's the assignment. I'll go into Settings and come here where it says Share with Google Classroom. If I share it with Google Classroom and click Save, it's going to pop up my Google Classroom and it's going to ask me which class to assign it to. I selected my Inspire Science demo class and it's going to ask me what I want to do with it. For the most part, I'm going to use this as create an assignment because I could do my grades here and keep track of them so that, that parents get a responses to how the students are doing. I'm going to want to name it the same thing and counter the phenomenon. And then I will give them the instructions, please complete. And then just note that when you assign it this way and the students get into it this way, that they're going to have to open up Inspire Science first and then click on the Google assignment in Google Classroom. That way they'll get linked into their account. Otherwise, it's going to take them to a login screen that they won't be able to log in from because we are a single sign-on district. So make sure that you do that first step. And then I'm going to put it in the topic you know, one module one and click assign. There we go. So now this has been assigned both in Inspire Science and in Google Classroom. So it depends on how the students are going to get to it. So what we will do is go ahead and show you what it looks like. We're going to show you what it looks like when we when the students log in to Inspire Science. So if I click on here, I can emulate the student. Now, anything that I do for this student is going to be actually, um, anything that I do while I'm emulating the student is going to be recorded. So don't save any work and don't do any work if you are working with a real student. My students are demo students, so I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like from their end to complete this assignment. When I click continue, it will take me to the student work. And then you'll see right here. So this is what a student screen looks like. We have the home screen. We have lessons here. We have past work. If I click on the to do where it says let's go, it's actually going to take me to that assignment that I just assigned. So again, I've already been in this one. Would I like to navigate to my last known location? I'm going to click cancel and it'll take me to the beginning so I can encounter this as a student would the first time they come in. So I can have this read to me. So it's going to read to me the entire page and then automatically advance. If I don't want it to advance, I can always pause it before it advances to the next slide. So um, here's my picture again. As you can see, the students can click on it and, and play with it just like we did. They can go to the second slide. They can watch the video. They have the same controls that we had at the bottom there. So if they'd like to change their view or um, increase the rate that they're watching it back.
And then they have the opportunity to complete this assignment as well. So over here, it will tell them about this assignment. If they need more space to do their work, they can click the blue arrow and it will close that down and they can actually do the work. And then here, this student is, has done their assignment. They're like, hey, it's going to slow down here, but then it's going to increase to go up. So then they click submit. When they submit their work, it's going to ask them to verify that they would like to submit the assignment and they will click yes. Once they do that, they will see a green check mark. That assignment is finished. And in our section as teachers, you will see when you go into your assignments tab, there is now one to grade. So if I click on that one, you'll see here it says submitted, not yet graded, and I can view the student work. This student has not yet started it, so I want to tell them, hey, don't forget to do this assignment. I can click on where it says not yet graded, and I can add a note. Don't forget to complete this by tomorrow and click save. You'll see now that this little uh, comment pops up for the student. If I go back to the roster and I emulate student 72, you'll see that this comment actually pops up for them on their assignment. They can see that the teacher has made a comment and they can click on it. See, here's the comment. Here's my teacher note. Don't forget to complete this by tomorrow. This is when I gave them the note. And then they can jump right into the assignment to complete it. Now, once they've done that, once they've come into this assignment at all, even if they haven't marked anything, what we're going to see on the teacher side is something different. It's going to show us that they have actually or go to ass assignments tab. I know it still says one to grade, but when I click on that, you'll see right here, it changed from not started to in progress. So now that, pro now that student has looked at the assignment. It doesn't mean that they've done anything. They might have clicked on it and closed it right away. But anytime that they've encountered the, prog they've encountered the assignment at all, it will show in progress. And then the student has not yet started the assignment. Now, once I grade it so I can view the student's work, the student has completed the assignment. So it'll show me their assignment right here. I can take a look at that. Um, I can, whoops, not search. Um, I can assign points. I can add a note, this note the students and I will be able to see, but not, um, not the rest of the student, just this particular student and I will be able to see. If I close the drawing tools, it gives me a little bit better idea of where they drew on that assignment. It's not quite perfect when we're viewing it this way because as you can see, that is not exactly where the students had circled, but you get the idea of where they circled. So I'm going to go ahead and give this student 10 points. It will say, and click save. After I do that, it'll say it was manually adjusted because I put those points in. I can also add a note, good job. And then when I do that, um, click save. It'll show up up here that this has been saved. And then when I go back to my assignments list and I open this assignment, you'll see that there's a comment here. He's been given 10 points. I can view this student's work in progress. I could choose to grade it, but um, I could also wait until it closes so that student has a chance to actually finish their work. Um, you'll notice though that because this student has not started, I won't be able to view that yet. I can also assign a bulk score if all empty scores for uh, it will fill all the empty scores for this assignment with a new score. Um, if I wanted to overwrite what the other students had, I could also overwrite existing scores and just give everybody the same score so that if everybody's done it or if it was a participation assignment and I know which students have done it, um, I can zero out the students that weren't present for that participation and then I can put in the bulk score for all the other students. So that's a nice feature. Um, that pretty much covers assigning from 
the dashboard. If we assign from a lesson, it works the same way. So if I wanna go into the lesson levels, these are where I'm going to find the five e-lessons. And our blades will be part of those five E's. You'll see all five, engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. So this is where the meat of my lessons are. You'll want to make sure that you're assigning something from each of these areas. Specifically, you'll want to be picking things that are going to help move the student thinking along. That science probe at the beginning is set for kind of catching misconceptions or preconceptions that the students have. And then what we want to do throughout the rest of the lesson is help them to confront any of those preconceptions that would lead them down a faulty path of reasoning in science. And we want to do that by giving them experiences that will help challenge their own thinking. And that way they really get to become the discoverers of the science as they work through the lesson. So in this case, in our engage phase, we have another phenomenon. It's a 360 video. So you can assign that to the students and they can actually explore that. Um, we have objects in motion which is an inquiry activity. If you feel like this is an activity that the students may not have the materials that they need at home or similar materials to the materials that are suggested, you can always use the inquiry rewind, which actually walks the students through the way that the lab was designed. It is not automatically part of the presentation and it's not automatically assigned to the students, but you can assign it so that they can experience the lab or at least experience watching the lab. Maybe there are some things that they could do at home that could be uh, similar to what the lab shows. But make sure that they're getting an opportunity to have those uh, inquiry activities in one way or another. The explain phase is really the part where the students are then, after exploring and engaging in a phenomenon, that's where they're going to get the information to connect the science to the experiences that they've had. So if you don't give them any experiences before the reading, then they're going to have to try to make sense just of the reading itself without the connection to that experience. So try your best when you're assigning activities for students at home for them to have either labs or activities that they can experience before doing some of the reading so that they have idea they can connect the ideas to the activities that they've already done. So the way to assign a reading assignment is just the same as we assigned the the phenomena assignment before. You're going to click assign. It'll put in the title and you can assign it to whichever students you'd like to assign it to, assign points possible. You have to assign at least one point for the reading um, so that it will make it an assignment. And then you can click assign. Now the difference between this kind of an assignment and the other kind of assignment that we looked at before is that in the reading, the students will have reading the vocabulary words are linked to the glossary, so they can click on those. There are, uh, you can have the, again, the information, the nice thing about the information here is that it'll tell you the standards that they can use. Um, there are highlighting tools, so we can highlight. The kids just highlight the section and it puts an highlight in, and then it'll actually read the selection. So, if I click on that highlight, now I can change those colors. I can change the way the highlighter shows up. I can underline and I can add notes. Um, these will stay with this as long as it is an assignment. Then if I wanna clear those, I can clear the highlights, click remove and it removes all of those. Or I can click this, puts it back on, okay? 
And then um, students can progress through this reading. And then it ends with, in this case, a video. So they watch acceleration to learn how objects move. Tap on the picture. And it'll launch a video outside of the course, which is a brain pop movie. And this one has a movie and a quiz along with it. So every, every reading assignment is a little different. Some may have questions at the end that the students answer, um, but it is interactive reading. And I highly encourage you to teach the students how to use the highlighting tools and the note-taking tools so that they can get the most out of that interactive reading. Um, all the reading assignments that are here are the same that you will find in the textbook. So, um, just know if you're going through the textbook, you could also assign it separately um, here in the platform so that the students get to interact with it using the digital tools that they might encounter later on in other um, in testing or assessing. Also, we have close reading activities, which again, encourage students to use those highlighting tools. So it tells the students here and it's interactive. What do I do when I inspect? Uh, Rereading, making connections. You'll see it says talk about it. So we might have to consider some ways to give the students the opportunity to talk either through typing in like Google Classroom, posting a question that the students can react to one another or perhaps um, using things like Flipgrid, or even a small portion of your Zoom time in a day to have a conversation around some of the reading that they're doing so that the students have a chance to actually interact around the learning that they're doing. And then finally describe where they're actually gonna type their answer here. So the close reading has some specific work around it for helping the students understand what it is that they're reading. And it has the uh, revisit the science probe at the end. So it'll take them right back to the science probe that they were working on. And then this one has even a video at the end to help the students understand more about gravity and friction. So that is a brief walkthrough of how to assign, check student progress, um, giving feedback with the commenting, and how you can add some work scores to the student work. Uh, I hope that this is helpful. If you have more questions, um, feel free to email me. Thanks for watching this episode of the Curriculum Cafe. Click like and subscribe to join the cafe for more classroom tips from the TOA team.